The point of this obstacle course is to simulate what a soldier might encounter when he's in the field. If a warfighter has to clear a building, they might have to jump through a window, the balance beam if they have to step on anything narrow, chasing somebody down, things of that sort. So we're trying to simulate a real environment in a way that we can constrain and quantify their movement. We're using sensors called inertial measurement units and essentially it's a uh, small box that inside of it has an accelerometer and a gyroscope which can detect acceleration in uh, three directions, up, down, and sideways, and then also the rotation of the sensor in th those three directions as well. So by attaching those sensors to the body segments, uh, like a foot, uh, the torso, we can see exactly where those body segments are moving in space. Coming over. The whole point of this project is to be able to see how a soldier can move through these obstacles and then we're gonna weigh them down with body armor and see what changes when they have body armor going through these same obstacles. And go! Everything you got, let's go! So our goal as a research team all the way through is to and go. hammer in the algorithms that analyze this data. Right now, the gold standard that the Army has to use is called motion capture, which is a set of cameras, with reflective markers on the body, similar to what they use in the movies. The problem with that is you can only do that in a very small space in a lab. Let's go, Nathan, come on. It takes a long time to process that data. There you go, come on. So with these sensors, we cut out almost all of that hassle. Go. And we can do it in a real environment, having them do the movements that they would naturally do. 96. Right, the military wants this as soon as possible so they can start integrating it into the new equipment that they use Good. and integrating it into the soldiers as they're out in the field. All right, coming up. Maybe someday, you know, a sergeant will have a, you know, a tablet and he'll have a readout on every soldier and be able to see if their pattern indicates fatigue, they can pull that soldier back, take him out of a, a hot zone, protect the soldier so he doesn't hurt himself. He's an effective soldier and, you know, he doesn't get himself hurt from the enemy. Aluminum, titanium, composites, those are the kinds of materials we can, we can leverage the elasticity of such materials to design things to be strong and flexible at the same time. Traditional structures are...